Okay, so we're going to look at a proof of this result, that if you have the sum of the first n cube numbers, this is equivalent to taking the sum of the first n integers all squared. So this is a really nice proof, because first of all, it's not a geometric visual proof, and secondly, it doesn't rely on proof by induction, so it's quite a unique proof for this particular result in that regard. So a bit more formally, what we're trying to show in sigma notation is, we want to show that first of all, the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k cubes, this is our sum of the first n cube numbers, is equal to the sum of the first n integers, so the sum from k equals 1 up to n just of k, all squared like this. So this is what we want to show, but for our proof we're actually going to prove an equivalent formulation of this statement. So this is true if and only if we're going to now just subtract k squared from each term on the left hand side, so now it's going to be the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k cubed minus k squared. And in order for this to be balanced, we just need to take away now 1 squared, 2 squared up to n squared. So we need to take away the sum of k squared on the right-hand side. So we keep our original sum from k equals 1 to n of k all squared on the right-hand side. But now we need to subtract the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k squared like this. So this is actually what we want to try and show now, and we'll prove this by starting with the left-hand side, then eventually showing that this is equivalent to the right-hand side, like this. So for our proof, if we start with the left-hand side, we've got the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k cubed minus k squared, like this. And now the first step is just to factorise this expression, so we get the sum of k squared times k minus 1, like this, if we factorise. And a second thing we can do at this point is notice that when k is 1, k cubed minus k squared is actually just 0. So we can get rid of the k equals 1 term without changing the value of our sum. So we'll just write this now as the sum from k equals 2 up to n of k squared times k minus 1. And at this point, this is quite an unusual step, but we're essentially going to notice that we've got a k minus 1 times a k here, which means that we can actually use a result, we're effectively going to insert another sum into this sum to turn it into a double summation. And we're going to use the result, just the sum of our first, let's say the sum of our first m integers. So we have the sum from i equals 1 up to m. The formula for the sum of the first m integers is just m times m plus 1, all divided by 2, like this. You can see, because we've got a k minus 1 times a k, we'll be able to extract a similar sum within our sum here. So we'll write this now as the sum from k equals 2 up to n, then we'll write this as k times k minus 1 times another k, just splitting this k squared into two separate k's. And we'll also divide these two terms by 2, which means on the outside we're going to multiply by 2, so that these two expressions are still equivalent to each other. And the reason we've done this is now we've got this k minus 1 times k divided by 2 term, which we can now write as this is just the sum from i equals 1, so it's the sum of the first k minus 1 integers, so the sum from i equals 1 up to k minus 1 of i. And the reason that we change from k equals 1 to k equals 2, that's particularly important here, because this sum wouldn't be well defined, the sum up to k minus 1, if we included the k equals 1 term. So now we can write all of this as the 2 times the sum from k equals 2 up to n of k times, this is now going to be the sum from i equals 1 up to k minus 1 of i here. Then we'll take this k term, we can put this inside our sum, so we can multiply, instead of adding all of these i's, then multiplying by k, we could actually multiply them all by k before doing the addition. So we could write this all now as 2 times the sum from k equals 2 up to n of the sum from i equals 1 up to k minus 1, where we just multiply our i's and k's. And we'll just write these in alphabetical order now as i times k. So we've started with our left-hand side here, and we've shown that this is equivalent now to 2 times this double sum of i times k. And now to help us understand what's going on in this double sum, we've just got a table here showing all the different values of i times k that we need to add together. So for example, when k is 2, we sum from i equals 1 up to 2 minus 1, we just have the i equals 1 term. 
When k is 3, we sum from i equals 1 up to 2, so we have two i terms. When k is 4, we go from i equals 1 up to i equals 3, so we have all these different values of i times k. And finally, when k is n, we sum from i equals 1 up to n minus 1 here, like this. But we've got two copies of this sum, and a nice way of adding the second copy onto this diagram is that when we've got 1 times 2, we can now add in a corresponding 2 times 1 using the symmetry here, and similarly our 1 times 3, we can add in another copy of this as 3 times 1, our 2 times 3 we can add in as 3 times 2, we can do this all the way along up until we go for our n minus 1 times n, we can have n times n minus 1 would go here, so n times n minus 1 up here, and we'll go all the way here, we've got n times 1, for example. So we do get just another copy of this exact same region here. And this is really neat because now, first of all, in this top section up here, these are all of our values where i is less than k. So we've got i is strictly less than k over here. But then all of these terms on the right-hand side in this triangular region are the values where i is greater than k. And all that's left in the middle if we were to fill in every possible multiplication in this grid, all we're missing now are the square numbers, so where i is actually equal to k, so 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, all the way up to n squared at last there. So we can start to see how some of this minus the sum of integers squared structure might start to appear naturally here. So what we can say now, using this sort of insight, is we started with our left-hand side and shown that it's equal to 2 times this summation here where i is less than k. So we can say now that our left hand side, instead of being two lots of this red triangular region, the sum of all of these where i is less than k, we can write this now as the sum, first of all i less than k, so these both go between 1 and n of i times k, but then also this second region where i is greater than k. So we can include this now as, once again, the sum between 1, to where we've got k is strictly less than i, and they're both less than or equal to n of i times k. But then we can write this whole thing as this entire sum without the square numbers. So we can write this now as this entire sum, so this is just the sum of all values of i and k between 1 and n, i times k. But then we need to subtract now just 1 squared, 2 squared, so we subtract and write this as the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k squared. So you can see we've already got this minus the sum of our squares up to n squared term that we're looking for on our right hand side. But we still need to deal with this term here where we've got the sum over all of our values of i and k between 1 and n of i times k. And how we're going to deal with this is to actually notice that if we were to multiply every single 1 times 1, 1 times 2, 2 times 1, 2 times 2, and so on, all of this, this is actually just the same as doing 1 plus 2 plus 3 up to n, and expanding the bracket by hand, and so multiplying this by 1 plus 2 plus 3, and so on, up to n, again, like this. So if you were to expand the bracket by hand, you'd get every single term here, so in this upper triangular region, everything on the diagonal, 1 squared, 2 squared, 3 squared, up to n squared, and you'd also get everything on the lower triangular region as well, if you so expand these two brackets by hand. So this is saying then that actually our left hand side, if we replace this sum of all of our i times k's, we can just say this is the sum of the first n integers multiplied by itself, so the sum of the first n integers all squared. So we can write this as the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k all squared, then minus, we keep this sum as it was, the sum from k equals 1 up to n of k squared. So this is exactly what we were trying to show. This is the right-hand side of what we wanted. So we started with our left-hand side, the sum of k cubed minus k squared. We've now shown that this is equivalent to the sum of our first n integers all squared minus the sum of our first n square numbers. And we saw at the start this is equivalent then to the original statement we were trying to prove. So we can say then for certain that the sum of the first n cubed numbers is indeed equivalent to the sum of the first n integers all squared.